Hey there, thanks for stopping by my channel to color. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Today we're going to be using the new My Favorite Things stamp set, Snow Buddies, and we're going to be building a scene. We're going to color those with Copic markers, and here's a little screen that'll show you all the colors I used. It's just a quick view. Um, I'll put this again at the end of the video in case you would like to pause it and save it for later. This is the fast forward version of this video. It took me about an hour and a half to color this um, images and put it the card all together. If you're interested in that, there is a video for that. But in the meantime, we're just going to go ahead and do the coloring here and speed through it so that you can see what everything's going on. I'll kind of quickly explain what goes on. I stamp my images on some Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock. So let's color. All right, so let's go ahead and do our skin first. We're going to do our hair and then her cheeks. And for her skin, we're going to use E11, 21, and 00. For her cheeks and her nose, we're going to use R20. And then for her hair, we're going to use Y15. So I'm going to go ahead and I like to color darkest to lightest. So I'm going to start with my E11 and then go over the edges of that with my E21. And then we'll go over the edge of that with our E00. And I left a little white space there in the center because I'm going to give it two coats. I like to do two coats. That helps me to soften things up and just blend everything a little bit better. When I get to the lightest color, I like to go over the entire thing just to soften everything and kind of smoosh all the colors together. Then we're going with our R20 and we're going to give her cheeks a little bit of that red there. And then I did a little dab on her nose because, you know, when you're outside, you have a little red pink nose. And then she doesn't have much hair there. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my Y15 to color that in. And I just went over it two or three times just so that it would be nice and um, bright yellow. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to work on that fence in the background. For that, we're going to use E49, 44, and 43. I'm going in with my E49 and I'm just putting that down where I want there to be some dark shadows. So at the bottom of each post, underneath where the snow is, and then along the bottom and the edges there of my fence post. I also put a few little dash lines um, on the post so that it would look like wood. And I'm just... Um, making a really small line there next to her coat sleeve because I didn't cut that little piece out when I masked it so I just went ahead and drew the line in myself. So now I'm going over the edge of that E49 with E44. Again nothing fancy. I'm just going to go over that quickly and just soften the edge of the line and then I'm going to fill in the rest of the area with my E43. Again, I'm just going over both of those colors and kind of smooshing them all together, trying to be careful going around that snow because it's going to be white and I don't want to get any on that. Then we're going to go ahead and go back with our second coat and I'm adding a few more little dashy lines in there on some of the posts. So again, it'll look like it's got some wood grain going on there. We're trying to fake it. It doesn't have to be perfect because wood isn't perfect, but you just add a few little lines in there to make it look more authentic. Then I'm coming in and softening all of that with my E44. And I decided since I had the E44 out, I'd go ahead and just color in the snowman's little arms there. Nothing fancy. I just went over them a couple times with E44 and filled them in. Then I'm going to go ahead and go over my fence post with a second coat of E43. And I go over both of the colors so that they will be all nice and blended together. And don't you love how you can see the little like wood grain stripes that I put in there? They're not too defined, but you can see it just a little bit um, in the wood there. So go, we're going to go ahead and hop down. We're going to do our little dog. So for the dog, we're going to use W87653 for the body. And for the belly, we're going to use W32, nope, W432 and 0. So I'm starting out with W4. And I just put a little dash of that where I wanted it to be the darkest. Then I'm going over the edges of that with W3. Just giving a nice, cute, little, quick little stroke there. Then we'll grab W2. We'll go over the edges of that. I'm just again filling in a little bit of space. He's got quite a bit of belly there, so I left quite a bit of that white for my W0. So again, I used my last color to go over the previous colors, and I left this belly at the top white because when I come back with my second coat, when I add it on top of um, the second coat, I'll go all the way to the edge, and then it'll fill it all the way in. And I decided I was going to leave his ears. They were not going to get a second coat, so I think that made them a little bit lighter and, and made them stand out a little bit more. Then I just came back with my W4 and darkened that edge up on his stomach just a little bit more. So now we're going to go ahead and do his body. So for that, we're going to do W8, 7, 6, 5, and 3. 
So we'll go in and we'll add W8 or wherever we want it to be the darkest. So along the back of his arm, a, a little tiny line on his back there. And when I use th this one and the W7, I just barely put any on there because those are both really dark and I don't want him to be a I want him to be black, but I want him to appear that he's lighter, so I'm trying to be very sparing on these darker colors. Even this one, I only added a tiny bit more onto that line so that I've got quite a bit of white space still left on there. And then we can come back in with that. So here we are adding our W5. And again, see it's hardly any still any on there. Just a little bit more to fill in some space. Then we'll go back with our W3. And I'm, since I'm going to do two coats, I went ahead and left a little bit of white on his face and his leg there in the front. So that that would be even lighter when I come back the second time. So we're just going to go ahead and add those all in there. And again, I'm keeping the darker colors. Um, to a small little line. I don't want to be t to bring them out too far because I want him to really um, to appear black but to have some highlights on there. I want to be able to still see his eyes through these colors. So we'll go over that with our W5 and then we're going to take our W3 and we're going to fill in the rest of that um, of his body. And this time I go over the entire um, little all of the black parts. And his face still has a little line there, so I'm going to give that a couple of quick more little coats just to, you know, straighten it out. And then on the edges of his ears, I went back over the very edges with that W3 to um, give it a little bit more highlight on the edge. For his tongue, we're going to use um, EO4 and R32. And I just put the EO4 down where I wanted to be a shadow, and then I added R32 over the top, and I gave it two coats. Again, nothing fancy to that. We're just going to give it a quick, quick, and look how cute he looks. He just looks like he's just having a blast there laying down on the ground. He's totally adorable. And since I already had my W's out, I decided I'd go ahead and color in her boots. So we're going to do W6. And I'm just, again, adding those where I want the darkest. And for her glove up there, I went around the back of her glove, but I kind of left the front because I want there to be some space there between the front of her glove so it looks a little bit lighter. And we're just working our way through from W6 to W5 to W4. And I'm coming back here with my second coat. And we're just adding another coat on there. And then now we're going to go ahead and take W4. And we're going to pull that out to the edge of my um, glove. And then I'm going to go with my W3. I decided my boot needed to be a little bit lighter. So I went with my W3 at the very, very edges there. All right, let's go up here and we'll do the collar too. So I'm going to color in the zipper and then we're going to do W5 where we want to have some shadows at the back of her collar. Come around the front with W4 and then W3 on the very edge. And then we'll come back with W2 to fill that in. As long as you have the W's out, you might as well just do it all while you got them out there. No sense getting them all out again. Now we're going to go ahead and work with RV19, RV29, and RV14. We're going to go ahead and do his scarf. So I'm taking my RV19 and I'm laying that down and creating some little creases. And then we're going to go over the top of those lines with RV29. And then we'll come in with our RV14 and go over the top of that. And then, of course, we're going to come in with a second coat. We're also going to use these colors up here on um, the little snowman's hat and on his scarf. So as long as we got these colors out, we're going to use, I try not to get out of, I try to use the colors that I have out to periodically go from one little spot to another little spot, use them on different um, objects in my coloring. So here we are using it on the stripe of the snowman's scarf, and then we're going to use the stripes on the little snowman's hat. We're also going to use these same exact colors on the little girl's shirt and her leggings. I probably ran off there to do something else and had a little pause in the video. So now I'm coming back in and or the dog comes in. Mr. Hercules likes to come in to see what um, I'm doing in here when he's wandering around the house. So he's only he's going to be one here at the end of the month. So he likes to come and check out what I'm doing and then run off to go see what the other dogs are doing. And then he comes back. So again, I'm just doing the two coats. I'm just going in there with my darkest color, coming in with my lightest, my medium color, and then going over the entire thing with my lightest color. And I did get a little bit of that red on the stripes for my, my hat there, but that's okay. I'm just going to go over that later with my blue, or I can also take my colorless blender and um, go over that line a couple of times and it would erase it. I think I ended up just leaving it there. I didn't mind that there was a little bit on there. So here we're doing her shirt and her leggings. We're just going to give that two coats, again, like everything else. But I really like how um, the colors on her 
her shirt, go with the, the colors on the little snowman's stuff that he's got going right up to the front where the little dog is there with his scarf. It kind of pulls it all together that I kind of used those colors all on each of the three images. So now we're going to go ahead and use BO2, BO1, B00, and B000. And we're going to color in the snowman's scarf and his little um, hat up there. We're just going to go in and we're going to do the darkest color first. Then we go in with the next darkest color and add that on the top of that. And I always make sure to touch down on the edges of whatever I'm coloring so that it kind of blends it out into the next color. And then my lightest color, I go over the entire thing so that it kind of smushes all of those colors together. And if you look really closely at the snowman's hat up there, you can still see a little bit of those red lines in there, but that's okay. I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm just going to add a little bit more blue over the top and squish it out just a little bit more. I think the whole thing's just coming together perfectly. I'm really loving these images. If you didn't watch the video, if you want to see how I masked them, if you can go over and watch um, the full, the real-time video, and I went ahead and showed the whole process of masking the images in there and how I put them together in the masking um, post-it tape I used. Here we're going to use YR16 to color his nose in. Nothing fancy. I just went ahead and colored it in, and then I did a second coat along the bottom of his nose to make it a little bit darker. So let's hop over here and we'll do her um, coat. For that we're going to use G24, G43, G40, YG01, and YG61. And I'm going to use G24, 43, and then YG61 for two of parts of her coat in the sleeve. And that's what we're doing now. I could have went ahead and just used all three colors to color her whole coat in, but I thought it would look a little bit more interesting if I made the middle section of her coat just a little bit brighter. So I used the YG01 on that because it's a little bit more yellow. kind of makes it stand out just a little bit. Not too much, but it makes it a little bit more highlighted so her coat looks like it's just popping up a little bit there in the center part. We're also going to hop up there and we're going to color her hat with these same colors. So I'm going in with my G24 first and I'm adding the little creases up there at the top. I went and flicked down a little bit extra on those so that they would be a little bit more defined. And then we're going to come in and we're going to go over all of those lines with G43. And then we're going to go over the edges of those lines with our YG61. And then we come back in with our second coat. So I'm just going to pull that up there, flick it along until I get a little bit of extra color in there. And then I'm going to take up a little bit more space with my G43 this time, just because I didn't like how much white was up there. And then I'm going to go over the entire hat with my YG61. Like I said, again, this helps me to blend all the colors together by swiping over the entire thing. Now we'll hop down here and we'll make the center part of our coat a little bit lighter with G43, YG01, and then G40 over the top of that. And see how it's just a little bit lighter so it kind of makes that section of the coat pop out a little bit more and just gives it a little bit more interest, at least to me I think it does. So in this little stamp set there is also another little girl so you could totally put her um, behind the snowman or kind of put in, put both girls behind the snowman or another the other dog could go on there. I think this is a really cute stamp set. It'd be perfect for Christmas cards or for um, holiday cards. Just for a winter or just because card too would be perfect. Here we're going to add a little bit of definition to our snow with V20 and then C00 over the edge of that just to um, give it a little bit of color. Same with our little snowman. I'm kind of going around with my V20 and making a little bit where I want the shadows on my snowman to be. And then I'm using the C00 to um, soften the edges. But I didn't go around the entire, um, I didn't fill in the entire snowman. I wanted him to still be white, so I'm just using this as a little bit. And then we're taking our V20 and adding some shadows underneath of our dog. And I made sure that my shadow went underneath of his tail too so that it made it look like his tail was sticking out there. Okay, now we're going to get serious and we're going to draw our own tree. So for that, we're going to start with W5. And I put a piece of paper under there so that in case I drew off of the, the page, it wouldn't color my desk. Even though I could use some colorless blender to... Um, go ahead and wipe that up. I decided I didn't want to color the desk, so I just slipped the paper under there. So now we're going to go in with our W3, and I'm just sort of now mapping it out. So I'm just drawing over the edge of that, and I decided I should, probably should have made the fence go to the edge there. We're just going to make the fence stop, and we're going to make the tree go over the top. Then we'll draw in a little bit more with our W2, and trees have kind of like roots and things that go out, so I made sure to add that in. 
Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some little lines to my tree. This could be an alder tree or a birch tree. So I'm putting my little dark lines in there to make it appear more as a tree. And I'm going to go back now with my W3 and do the same thing. I'm not putting the lines in the same exact place. I'm kind of skipping around, making some shorter, some longer, you know, sort of like that. And the same thing with W2. See how quick I was on that one? Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to kind of thicken it up. So I'm going to take my W5 and I'm going to go right down that line. Your line does not have to be straight because trees are not straight. So don't worry about that. Just color your tree in and then go from there. And then now I'm going with my W2 and I'm just going up the side of the tree and now I'm going to fatten it up. I'm going to make it a little bit wider on this side so that that side of the tree is even lighter. And I decided my after going through over all that, my little lines were kind of dimmed down. So I went over a couple more. Now we're going to add a branch. Don't be scared. Just draw a little line and just draw some little lines off of that. This tree is already lost all of its colors or all of its leaves because it's winter time. And I'm just adding a few little squiggly lines so that it looks like it's just the tree branches up there. See, doesn't it look cool? All right, now we're going to add some mountains. So for that, we're going to use C2, 1, double zero, and double zero. And I'm just kind of winging it. I took my C2 and I added a line for where I want my first hill to be. And then I'm going over the edges of that with my other three colors just to soften the edge of that line. And I'm not making the line very thick because I want it to be a, still a white hill but have the shadow of like it's rolling over the top. Here we're going to add another line. So I'm going to go ahead with my C2. And again, I'm just drawing that line on there. Try to keep just the the tippy tip of it so that it would look like a pretty thin line when I'm done. And then I take my other three colors and go over the edges of that to thicken it up just a little bit and soften my edges. And I use the colors there in that crease so that it looked like that hill is behind the one that I colored first. That was my thought anyway. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw a horizon line. So let's see, this is the back of our little hilly pasture. Same thing, we're just using our four colors and making a little bit of some color on there. And I decided this time I would use a little bit of color on that very first hill. I bring it up a little bit more so it make look, look, make it look like it was standing up and casting some shadows backwards into the hill there. Same with this little crease. We're going to add a little bit of shadow in there so it makes it look like it kind of bumps down and this hill's in front of it. At least to me. Maybe you don't want to do it that way. That's perfectly fine. Here, let's add a couple of little mountains in the back. So we'll go with our C2. And then I decided I'd go ahead and make another mountain so I can decide where I want them before I get started. And this mountain went clear off of the top of my little image there. And then we're coming back in with our other two colors, our other three colors, and we're just going to soften those up and add a little bit of shadows over onto some of our parts to make it look kind of a little bit more realistic. It's not supposed to be completely realistic. This is my quickie coloring thing, and I, I didn't, to tell you the truth, I didn't practice. I just decided I was just going to color it on there and make it try to look like a hill. And I think in the end, it looks pretty too dang good. So what do you think? Do you think it looks pretty good? If it does, if you think it turned out okay, leave me a comment down below and tell me what colors maybe you would have used different or what would you have done different and maybe I can try it next time. All right, so that's going to do it for our coloring today. If you have a question, leave me a comment down below and I will make sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. I really appreciate it and it helps my channel out. And as promised, here's that list of Copic markers I thought you might be interested in. If you are, you can pause the video right now and then write them down. Otherwise, you can head over to the store blog and there is a pin card at the bottom of the post that you can collect those from. And right about now, you should be seeing a screen that will show you a couple more videos I thought you might be interested in. Otherwise, I hope you're having a fabulous day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.